Cars and cameras have a lot in common. They both began life as crude manifestations of revolutionary ideas. The car promised a means to travel faster and more comfortably than a horse, and the camera gave us the means to freeze a moment in time forever. Both inventions changed the world. In a way, cars and cameras are freedom machines, delivering us from our TVs, our computers, and our smartphones, and into the realms of adventure, discovery, and fun. They encourage us to leave our homes for new horizons and glorious vistas, and they unburden us from the stresses and constraints of our modern work-filled lives. Sadly, tripods aren't nearly as exciting. I mean, they all have three legs and they do one job. You put your camera on top and then your hands are free for waving about, shading your eyes or picking your nose. They all travel at about the same speed if you chuck them off a cliff and they have the same color palette as most SUVs and they perform the same basic functions. The differences, for the most part, come down to size, materials and quality. Now in the old days, you either used an Italian Manfrotto like I did, a Japanese Slick or a French Gitzo because, well, they were widely considered the best. Today, though, there are lots more quality brands to choose from, like Really Right Stuff, Three-Legged Things, uh, Benro, Peak Design, and Sure. I'm told it's pronounced Sure. And this brand, iFootage. You might have seen their TC7 tripod before in the hands of little-known landscape photographer and YouTuber Thomas Heaton. Indeed, it was his choice that inspired the purchase of my first carbon fiber tripod, the iFootage TC6. I've used the TC6 for a few years now, but about a year ago, I bought its big brother, the Beastly TC9, upon which I placed the bomb-proofed, really right stuff BH55 ball head. Now in truth, it's overkill for what I do, but I bought it because I wanted those extra long legs for the hilly country where I like to shoot a lot. And well, it just looks bloody sexy. I mean, one look at this thing and you just know it'll survive a nuclear winter, even if it only has cockroaches for companions for the next thousand years. And now we have this, the latest tripod from iFootage, the cute as a button TC3B carbon fiber travel tripod made especially for video creators. And today we're going to compare it to the standard bearers, the Peak Design travel tripod and the Ulanzi and Goman Zero carbon fiber travel tripod. The folks at iFootage must have heard I have a bit of a tripod fetish, so they sent me this and they said, do whatever you like. So yes, this little tripod is a freebie, but I can tell you right off the bat, it isn't perfect. It does have some flaws and I'm gonna show you those in a minute. But first we need to find a place to photograph my Boxster so I can show you how this tripod fares with a camera atop its three skinny little legs. Okay, so first the pros. Like all iFootage products, it seems to be fairly well made and it's nicely finished. Unlike some other travel tripods, just about everything is either alloy or carbon fiber. It's very easy to open up with all four levers falling nicely to hand and just as easy to collapse. Like the TC6, 7 and 9 tripods for my footage, it comes equipped with the excellent fast bowl leveling system and the retractable rubber feet which reveal sturdy metal spikes. So good thing no lost feet. With its included Komodo K3 fluid tilt and pan head, it weighs about 1245 grams and it's just 47 centimeters or 18 and a half inches long when fully retracted. And despite the absence of a center column, it does go high enough for most people, I reckon, at 139 centimeters or about 54 and a half inches, which is about seven centimeters higher than both the Peak Design Travel Tripod and the Ulanzi and Goman Zero with their center columns down. Now with them up though, of course, they're much taller and they extend to 153 and 158 centimeters respectively. Thanks to the absence of a center column though, it drops very quickly down to 17 centimeters or 6.7 inches. It's also light at 1.3 kilograms with the K3 head, which is about the same as the Peak Design, but 200 grams heavier than the Zero. Now iFootage is known for their buttery fluid head, so the pan function on this is lovely, as is the tilt function, which is also adjustable for tension. The Peak Design has an innovative head, but there's no fluid pan or tilt function. The Zero, on the other hand, has a fluid pan head with a leveling bowl, so it's lovely to use. 
Almost all the levers and dials are anodized in beautiful shiny red finish, which is very pretty. And very importantly, the head on this tripod is Arca Swiss compatible. So it's gonna fit the included plate that comes with it and any other Arca Swiss plates that you have, including the Peak Design plates of which I have about a million. The Zero on the other hand only fits their innovative but irritatingly slightly smaller F38 plates. They're just slightly smaller than the Peak Design ones. Um, it does come with an extra center column onto which you can put your own, you know, Arca Swiss compatible head, but you still need to supply the head, which is a bit of a bugger. Uh, the launch price with the Komodo K3 fluid head is just 229 US dollars. The Zero with the standard F38 head is 300 US dollars or 325 at the moment with the U190 mini fluid head. The Peak Design carbon fiber travel tripod though is a whopping 600 US dollars. So the TC3B is cheaper than at least two of its rivals anyway. Okay, now for the cons. The absence of a center column does limit its maximum height to 139 centimeters. And you know, look for video work, I think that's fine. I don't think that's a problem, but for stills, it might be. Uh, also packed away, it's 46 and a half centimeters compared to the Peak Design's 39 centimeters and the Zero's 42 and a half. So it's not as compact as the others. Also, the Peak Design can carry nine kilos. The Zero can carry six or 10 with the fluid head. The iFootage TC3B can carry five. And with the included K3 fluid head, only three. The thing is though, if you're using a mirrorless or DSLR camera, even with a large zoom lens like the RF 100 to 500, it's still gonna be more than enough. It's still gonna be fine, but you know, it's worth noting. Something else that was a bit of a negative that I discovered was that the handle on the tilt head does not unscrew. Instead, you have to use the included hex tool to remove two hex screws. However, the hexagonal heads on both these screws shredded into circles the moment I tried to undo them, so they're a bit soft. And I couldn't undo them in the time that I've had this tripod so far. Also, another thing, the little magnet that holds the tool into its little cubby hole on the tripod is so weak that you're almost bound to lose that tool the first time you take the tripod out, so be very, very wary of that. Now, because the tilt handle isn't easily removed, you're gonna to need to tilt the head all the way back and tighten it in place if you want the most compact, packed dimensions. And finally, another thing that I noticed using the uh, TC3B was that the levers on the legs, the locking levers, are a little bit sloppy. They wiggle around and they don't open or close with the same reassuring click as the Peak Design, which is rock solid. Or the Zero, which isn't quite as robust as the Peak Design, but a bit more tightly attached to the legs than the levers on the TC3B. So what's the verdict? Well, if you want the best travel tripod for stills or locked off video work and you have the budget, then in my view, the Peak Design travel tripod is still the one to beat. I think it still is a brilliant device. Yes, it's expensive, but I've had mine for ages and it's still in great condition after being beaten around for the last couple of years. Now, if a pan or pan and tilt head is important, then the Ulanzi Zero presents a really compelling option for video and stills, especially with the U190 mini fluid head, if holding a video camera is the tripod's main job. Just remember though, the included head isn't Arca Swiss compatible. So you're gonna to have to attach another head to the included spare center column if you wanna keep using your L bracket or your existing Arca Swiss plates. Otherwise, just slap on the included F38 plate and you're golden. Which leaves us with the iFootage TC3B. Now look, as a budget option for video work, it's pretty good, but it doesn't feel as well made as the TC6, 7 or 9 tripods from the same manufacturer. It might be cheaper than the Zero, but whether that makes it better value, well, that's another matter altogether. Most of it is great, but the Play-Doh hex screws and the Rattly lever locks don't really instill the same confidence as its larger brethren, I'm afraid. Anyway, if you'd like to see a more in-depth video on the TC6, TC9, and the Peak Design tripods, then just click over here. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and the subscribe button and the bell if you'd like to be notified when I post the next one. See ya.